شكرا يا ربي شكرا هديت قلبي شكرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان ومن شهد منكم الشهر فليسم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم My respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Truly and uh, honestly, we are very, very blessed. Indeed, we have been chosen. Indeed, we have been given this amazing blessing and uh, this good fortune of being among those people who have been blessed to be a part of this month of Ramadan. Indeed, many people had thought and they were dreaming and they were hoping and they were wishing and they were praying and they were just supplicating and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, make me a part of this month of Ramadan. However, many of them did not make it till today. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose me and you to be a part of this Ramadan. We should be very, very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Now, Having said that, you know, Ramadan comes only once a year. So obviously it happens that, you know, when me and you as human beings, we, we forget. And, uh, you know, especially when it comes to things that we don't discuss, you know, and it, a, a whole year goes by. So obviously then it becomes, uh, you know, kind of foggy in our memory and in our mind. So therefore we want to just go over a few important things uh, rules and regulations uh, the fiqh of fasting inshallah this document that I'm about to uh, present in front of you inshallah this presentation is prepared by Mufti Muhammad Zakir and Mawlana Faiz Rahman may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them uh, amazing reward and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself reward them for this effort that they have put forward without any further ado inshallah we start uh, so we will be discussing, we'll be covering inshallah, what is the definition of fasting, then we'll talk about intention, we'll talk about what is mustahab, what is makru, what breaks the fast, what does not break the fast, uh, some information, and who's exempt, and who does not have to fast, and then uh, the du'as. So, definition. Uh, the dic in the dictionary, uh, you know, the, the definition is uh, fasting literally means to abstain in terms of sharia. It means abstain from food, drink, and intimacy. And it is from dawn to sunset. From dawn to sunset. And uh, uh, with the intention of gaining proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the intention of getting proximity, of getting Allah subhanahu wa pleasure, to get nearness to Allah subhanahu wa Allah subhanahu says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So, تَتَّقُونَ To get proximity, to get nearness, to get closer, to build a, a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa So, from dawn, to from the time of imsaq, from the time that fajr starts, from that time till the sunset, to abstain from food, drink, and intimacy with one's lawful partner. Who must fast? Who has to fast? Now, fasting in the month of Ramadan is obligatory for ver uh, every adult, male or female, who is physically and mentally healthy and is not a traveler. Inshallah, we'll discuss uh, who is exempt uh, uh, further down, inshallah, as we go along. Now, fasting is not fard on 
uh, children that are not valid, that are not, uh, that have not reached um, uh, the age of puberty and that have not become uh, valid uh, in, in Sharia. Uh, fasting is not fought for those who are considered insane. Also, people that have, you know, uh, mental uh, challenges and they are uh, they have, uh, uh, they are not, they, they're not supposed to be fasting. They don't have to fast. Okay, if they're in mentally challenged, if they have any uh, uh, any problem, if they're insane, then they're not. They're, they don't have to uh, fast. Fasting is not for on those who have uh, any kind of illness that is deemed by doctor that you know uh, it is something that obviously if they fast it will cost them their life. It's life threatening or it's such a you know uh, they have such a such a kind of sickness that uh, requires them to uh, not fast and take medication in, in, in you know uh, through their mouth or so on and so forth or just in general if they fast they'll just die they'll have uh, they'll have issues so they don't have to fast now intention what is the intention now intention has to be made before each fast for it to count it's very important that we uh, this is a general principle that we have to make intention and it is necessary to, to make intention every day. Every day for each fast, it's important that we make the intention. If a person stays away from all those things that breaks one's fast, without an intention, if you if if you know you 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 fasted like a fasting person, however, you did not make the intention of fasting, therefore this fasting will not be valid. You know, uh, the famous hadith, "Innamal amalu bin niyad." All the actions they depend on their intention. When to make the intention? Well, the time for intention starts from Maghrib of the night before and lasts until basically the midday of the following day. This is the time for intention. We have the time from Maghrib the night before, meaning tonight. If I want to fast for tomorrow from Maghrib tonight till tomorrow midday, I have the chance to uh, make that intention for fasting. Example, someone wants to fast Tuesday when he can, when, when can he make the intention? Well, Monday, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr all the way till midday. This is what basically, and midday would be what would be midday? Let's say Fajr starts at 4 a.m. and Maghrib is at 9 p.m. So midday would be considered 12 30. Just right in the middle of these two times the time of Imsak and the time of a sun, a sunset, the time where you stop eating till the time of Maghrib, in between that, you cut that in half right in the middle. At that time, is uh, that's the last time to make intention. Now, if somebody woke up to partake in suhoor, they got up for suhoor, they, they made suhoor. However, they did not make the intention. How, what will happen? Would the fast be accepted? The answer is yes, it will be enough. The fast will uh, count. Why? Because the person got up for suhoor not thinking that this was lunch or dinner. Right? They got up for suhoor because they wanted to fast. So therefore, by virtue of getting up for suhoor, they have already uh, accomplished that. Now, what are the things that are mustahab, that are uh, preferred? Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said three things are from the characteristic of the prophethood. To hasten to open the fast, to delay suhoor, sehri, a pre-dawn meal, the one that you eat at night before fajr, to hasten... Uh, uh, to, to, to delay that until the last moment and to hasten to open the fast when you're opening your fast and to place right hand over the left hand in salah this is narrated by Tabari, Tabrani Zaid ibn Sabit radiallahu anhu narrates that Prophet sallallahu would stand up to offer salah after eating his food and the timing between the start of Fajr and when the Prophet sallallahu would stop eating was equivalent to the recitation of 50 verses so that was Approximately how long it took Rasulullah to finish eating after eating and to start salah. Not too long. Sahih al-Bukhari. Now, what are the things that are mustahab, that are preferred, recommended acts? Based on the hadith mentioned, to make sure that we take suhoor. Many people feel lethargic. They feel lazy. They feel like, you know, the day is not going by. And as a result, they complain and they're weak and they're, they can't get through the day. They can't fast. Well, because we have not fulfilled one of the most important uh, sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which is to partake in suhoor. So get up for suhoor, make sure you eat suhoor inshallah, whatever they may, that might be. And we'll read the hadith about what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to uh, do inshallah. Now, 
break fast immediately at the time of Maghrib. So partake in suhoor. When Maghrib comes in, don't delay. Don't wait for uh, you know somebody else. Just go ahead and put something in your mouth and open your fast. Don't delay. It's sunnah. It's mustahab to open your fast uh, as soon as possible. Uh, when time comes in, of course. And another, re another recommended thing is to make the intention at night. The best item to break the fast with, Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu reported that Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa would break the fast with fresh dates before performing salah. If there were no fresh dates, most of us will not get fresh dates. Right? Unless you're listening from Medina Munawwara or Makkah Al-Mukarramah. MashaAllah. Uh, lucky you. Uh, but other than that, we don't have fresh dates. So we'll have to take dried dates or any other date that we buy from the store. If we didn't, if Rasulullah SAW did not have that, then he will take, uh, sorry, he will take dry dates, then he will take a few sips of water. Jamia Tirmidhi. What is makru? What are the detestable actions? To chew gum, rubber, plastic, items or such such thing. Don't chew these things. Obviously these things, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't swallow them, but don't chew them. To collect one saliva in the mouth, this is this is obviously you know it's kind of disgusting to collect your saliva and keep collecting collecting until it it fills up your mouth and then you kind of swallow it to quench your thirst. That is, it's not supposed to be done. This is makro. To delay bath that has been become obligatory intentionally until fajr. So now, if you uh, throughout the night you had a relationship with your wife or you know vice versa with your spouse. And uh, now, or, you know, whatever the case, you have to take an obligatory shower. Now, don't delay that until Fajr. Take it as soon as possible. And to use toothpaste or tooth powder to clean one's teeth, it is permitted to use miswak of any uh, permissible fresh branch or root. However, don't use toothpaste or tooth powder or these things to clean one's teeth. This is makroom. Now, also, to complain of hunger and thirst during fast. To complain, we're talking about the things that are makru during fasting, right? So, don't use toothpaste, don't use tooth powder, don't use uh, mouthwash. These things are not, uh, uh, it's going to be uh, problematic. It's makru. It's uh, disliked. Uh, to complain of hunger and thirst during fasting. You're doing this for Allah. We're doing this for Allah. Let's, let's, let's you know, it's only a month. You've been eating and drinking all year long. Alhamdulillah. By the mercy of Allah. Let's not complain about hunger and thirst during during these few days that we have in, in hand, inshallah. Now, uh, to complain of hunger and thirst. To take the water too much of the nostrils when cleaning the nose. If we have, uh, you know, if you want to clean the nose and then, uh, you know, the water goes up too far up high in the nose, there's a chance that it might end up in the mouth. So don't do that. To gargle excessively, to gargle more than needed, don't do that. And to fight, to argue, to uh, use filthy or you know indecent language, to swear, to scream, you know, to f these things, not in the month of Ramadan, inshallah. Let's practice to leave these things. This is makro. To backbite, tell a lie, swear, sinf do sinful acts, and obviously these things are already not permissible. Then doing them in the in the state of uh, fasting, imagine how bad that is. So obviously stay away from you know backbiting, from you know lying, from you know saying bad things. What will break the fast? Now, anything with a perceptible uh, body, with a perceptible body, invalidates one's fast. So something that enters your body, it, if it reaches the stomach or brain, if it enters the body via the mouth, nose, or back private part, these are the normal three channels through which something enters then you know it's the chances are the fast will be invalidated now there are two types of uh, uh, invalidators one if you if it breaks your fast and then you have to do only qada making just make up one for one but there's another one that where you have to make up the qada and you have to give the kafara so there's two types one just make the qada to qada and kafara to make up and to give kafara now what are the things that will only necessary uh, will be necessary uh, to make qada eating and drinking if you eat and drink accidentally you ate and drank accidentally and 
obviously then you will just do qada of the, the fast. You'll break your fast, you'll just do qada. Forgetfully eating and drinking, thinking the fast broke. If you thought that your fast broke and you ate and drank, you know, forgetfully. Thinking Maghrib entered, but it didn't. You thought Maghrib entered and you started eating, but it didn't. It will break your fast. Okay? Maghrib entered, you thought Maghrib entered. You you intentionally broke your fast, opened your fast, knowing Maghrib entered, but it, ha it wasn't the time of Maghrib. In that case, you will only have to do one for one, qada. And again, thinking Fajr hasn't started, but continue to eat. Now, if you thought, you know, it's still not, you know, Fajr still didn't start, you continue to eat. And this is one of the things that we discussed yesterday, actually, uh, in one of the other pro programs. Uh, so, yeah, just make sure that you, you follow the timing and, you know, stop eating uh, when Fajr time comes in. Don't, 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 don't continue and thinking, you know, there's still more time. It will have to, uh, then you'll have to make up for this fast one for one. Now, what are the things that we will have to... Uh, regarding mouth and throat. Now, uh, swallowing a pebble or other items that people wouldn't typically eat. Objects, things, items that you don't usually eat, like pebble, like stone. These things you don't eat. But if you swallow something like that, then you will have to make qada. Swallow, swallowing water by accident when gargling for wudu or ghusl with the exception of water that remains in the mouth. Now, if you're making gar, uh, gargara, you're doing, uh, you're gargling in wudu or ghusl and you, you take a sip of water by accident. Your, your fast will break and you'll have to make one for one. Swall, swallowing blood that exists from the gums, you know, when you brush our teeth or, you know, if, you, if, if our gums are, if there's blood coming out of our gums in the teeth, in the mouth, uh, and and it and the, the amount of blood is more than the saliva so you can clearly taste the blood in the saliva and you drank you, you swallow that then it will break your fast and you'll have to make one for one swallowing toothpaste or mouthwash you'll have to make one for one we spoke about not this is being makru so obviously if it, if you swallow toothpaste you you swallow uh, mouthwash then you'll have to make one for one vomiting and therefore thinking that the fast is broken to deliver to, to deliberately vomit again so he vomited by accident and then you just thought that you know the vomit broke uh, the vomit broke your fast we're going to discuss about vomit later on uh, and then you vomit again on purpose you forced yourself to vomit then obviously you're, you even if the first vomit didn't break your fast the second vomit definitely broke your fast and you have to make one for one now uh, contain, uh, pertaining to nose Water used to clean the nose from wudu and ghusl reaches the throat or the brain. Like I said, you know, the nose has, you know, through the nostrils, you have a pathway to the brain, to the, to the mouth. So if you put water in the nose while, you know, uh, making wudu or ghusl and it, it reaches the brain or your, uh, uh, in that case, uh, the wudu, uh, the, the, what do you call this? The, the, the fast will break and you will still have to do one for one if you inhale medicine into the nostril so some people have a uh, nose pump pumps you know you put uh, uh, drips or uh, you know pumps in the nose obviously this will also reach the brain this will also invalidate the fast and inhaling smoke by one's doing so if you purposely you know inhaling smoke you are willingly inhaling smoke uh, and it doesn't benefit your body then obviously uh, you are uh, breaking your fast and you will have to do qada for it one for one now we'll discuss about those things that you'll have to do qada and kafara you will have to also go the distance to make up for it in a in a more uh, serious way just not uh, qada won't be just enough just to make up for it won't be enough you'll have to go uh, and do kafara and give kafara now if a person purposely break his fast in principle, if a person purposely breaks his fast in Ramadan without a valid shari'i reason through eating, drinking, or engaging in intimacy. So eating, drinking, or engaging in uh, with one's partner, then uh, obviously this will break your fast. And in these situations, you will have to give qada and kafara. And we'll discuss what is what is kafara. And so you'll have to make up for the broken fast because you broke one fast. And then you have to observe the kafara. So the, you have to do qada, which is one for one. 
and then kafara which is we will talk about it now what is kafara to fast 60 days consecutively if the 60 days uh, of fa a fast are not kept one after another consecutively continually a person if it's not continuous a person will have to start all over again so let's say you fasted uh, 49 days or 50 days straight no break and then you, uh, you 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 forgot to keep one or you broke one these 55 days that you have kept does not count now it won't for that this kafara won't count you have to do 60 days consider consecutively now one might ask what is this you know why is this so hard well it was very easy to keep one fast why did we have to make it so hard on ourselves you know it's us to blame nobody else this is just to teach us that don't break the fast of Ramadan. This is very important. You know, this is just to, from dawn till uh, sundown. It's not that hard that, you know, we just stay away from these few things for, for just a month. Alhamdulillah. Now, obviously, if a woman experiences menstruation during these days due to this, she, is, she was not able to fast. So let's say a woman is doing her uh, kafara. She's fulfilling her kafara. And then, you know, obviously she gets his, her monthly uh, and she uh, she's in that state for a woman it will not it will not be applicable she will do her menses and then she will start fasting and she will continue from 56 57 58 59 60 for her it's fine because that's not her doing it purposely she did not just break her fast now two if you can't do that then to feed 60 uh, 60 poor people two meals for a day or one person two meals for 60 days now Feed 60 poor people two meals for a day or one person two meals for 60 days. This is the kafara. But this kafara you can give only when you or the person who's, who has missed his, his or her fast is not able to uh, do the 60 consecutive days of fast due to illness or old age or because of some kind of sickness that you know there's no hope of recovery. That this person, there's no way they can make 60 fast in a row. There's no way. They're sick, they're old, uh, or uh, they're, they're just not capable. In that case, from them, they can feed 60 people, uh, one per, sorry, 64 people for uh, two meals for a day, or one person, two meals for 60 days, one way or another. But this is only for the people. This is not for healthy people. This is not for normal people. And then we have to also remember, Qada comes first. So you do first one for one. You do the Qada. And then, because you broke one. If you broke one, we broke one fast. You have to make up for one fast. And then you have to do 60 extra fast consecutively, one after another. That's the Kafara. So one is Qada and then 60 is Kafara. So all together, 61. Now, what are the things that will not break the fast. Rasulullah Abu Hurairah reports that Rasulullah said, whoever forgets he is fasting and eats or drink, let him complete his fast for it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has fed him and given him to drink. Sahih al-Bukhari. So if somebody is, he forgets, you know, you're just going about your day and you know, you're not used to fasting and then you just forgot and you took a sip of water, it's fine. It didn't break your fast because you forgot. Okay. It's not intentional. You forgot. This is the difference. This is the difference between what we mentioned earlier. You thought, earlier we said, if you thought Maghrib came in and you opened your fast, you didn't forget. That was intentional and you opened your fast. This is when you absolutely forget and you eat. Okay. So, swallowing, what are the things that will not invalidate one's fast? Swallowing one's own saliva and the wetness that remains after washing the mouth. So, after you wash your mouth, some wetness is left in the mouth. You don't purposely keep any water, you spit, spit it out, but there's still something left, you know, the little wetness, that's fine. That does not break your fast. Sniffing up mucus, if you have a, you know, stuffy nose, you have a runny nose, and then you, you know, sniff it up, and you kind of, you know, take it in, that's fine. It doesn't break, and it, it descends in your throat. It goes in your mouth and in your throat, you know, like that. It's fine. It doesn't break your fast. Inhaling smoke or dust by accident, unintentionally. You're not... You're not purposely going to smoke and dust and going, oh, what a beautiful smell. No, you're not doing that. It's unintentional. You walked into a place, there's smoke and boom, you know. Allah forbid there's a fire, you, you inhale smoke by accident and intentionally, not intentionally. So that will not 
break your fast starting the fast in the state of major ritual impurity so now if you happen to be impure which we said it was makro to uh, delay the shower till fajr but in case you did it's fine it's still not it will not break your fast but you shouldn't do it don't delay the the the, the ghusl uh, the f- taking shower injection blood t- transfusion kidney dialysis glucose or saline drip injection blood transfusion kidney so uh, kidney tra- dialysis glucose or saline drip these things will not break your fast again blood test or cupping f- or any form of blood blood extraction blood test or cupping or any form of blood ex- extraction does not break your fast tooth extraction if you're take, removing a tooth by, by the dentist just remember as long as no blood is or medicine is being swallowed it's fine now also inhaling through a continuous positive airway pressure you know if somebody is on oxygen and there's no other medication added to that oxygen and they're just breathing plain oxygen as long as it is only oxy- oxygen and no other substance it's fine it will not break your fast miswak or toothbrush will not break your fast but avoid toothbrush uh, avoid toothpaste on the toothbrush and actually avoid to- toothbrush because toothbrush has taste of toothpaste on it so avoid it swimming or submerging body in water without swallowing the water so if you swim or go into the water but you did not swallow the water you're fine it doesn't break your fast uh, for our sisters you know they have to sometimes taste the food obviously don't purposely taste the food but if you have don't swallow it as long as you don't swallow it it will not break your fast as long as it's on the on the tongue and you spit it out it will not break the fast and nicotine patches will not break the fast nicotine patches now about vomiting we spoke about vomiting earlier let's go through vomiting what is what, what kind of vomiting breaks uh, fast and does not break fast now there's two type intentionally vomiting if somebody throws up intentionally and someone vomits unintentionally now intentional there's two type mouthful and not a mouthful if it's intentionally if you vomit intentionally and if it's a mouthful then the fast will break if it's not a mouthful then the fast will not break if intentionally someone uh, throws up the fast will be invalid and if it's not intentional uh, sorry if it's not a mouthful then the fa- fast will be valid unintentional if unintentionally it's a mouthful or not a mouthful fast is still good if you're un- unintentionally throwing up and you're 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 feeling bad you know bad stomach and you feel like throwing up as long as it's un- unintentional you're forced to throw up it's just naturally you're throwing up whether it's a mouthful or more than a mouthful or not a mouthful it will not break a fast if any of the above scenario if a person deliberately swallows the vomit back down the throat the fast will break however intentional not intentional unintentional you f- you you threw up and then you put it back you and you swallow it again which is disgusting obviously but if you swallow it you know again then that will be uh, and if it goes down your throat then the fast will break Anas radiyallahu uh, sorry Sayyid al-Khudri Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiyallahu narrated that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said three things do not break the fast of fasting person cupping vomiting and wet dreams Sahih al-Bukhari Now how does one person decide that what is mouthful and what is not mouthful the definition of mouthful vomiting is that which one cannot hold back in one's mouth without difficulty so you you vomit it and it's in your mouth now if you're struggling and it comes out and you can't hold it in your mouth that's a mouthful but if you're able to hold it in your mouth you know that's basically that's the definition of mouthful if you're having difficulty to hold it and it comes out that's mouthful and anything less than that that's not mouthful if a little amount of vomit goes down then as a reflex action it went back down now uh, if 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 somebody has like a heartburn you know when you have heartburn and you have like you know you feel like you're vomiting and something comes up it came up and then you you and right away you put it back down will it break your fast a little amount of vomit went up my throat then a reflex action it you know uh, when it went back down i felt i had no control over it does my fast break answer